despite the fact that Mega Man 6 was keeping the main series chugging along in 1993, the spin-off that was released in the same year, Mega Man X, was also a success. So much so that it would get its own sequel and go on to be its own series of games, starting with Mega Man X2, released in 1994, on the Super Nintendo just like its predecessor. Much like the games of the main series, this sequel wouldn't deviate from its predecessor all that much. In fact, one of its criticisms is that it doesn't introduce much of anything new to the table. And yeah, it does follow the formula of the first game quite a bit. You play as X, on a mission to take down the Maverick robots looking to end humanity so the robots can take over, this time led by a group of three of these Mavericks called X-Hunters, since the last baddie, Sigma, is presumed dead. You can run, dash, shoot, and scale walls, while also gaining special ability upgrades you'll find in hidden areas, plus the traditional steal the weapon of the Maverick you've defeated routine. Once again, there are 8 of these Maverick bots to deal with before you go on to the final set of stages at the X Hunter's base. You collect health and weapon refills, as well as sub tanks and heart tanks on top of the armor upgrades. Also, much like the classic series, the sequel doesn't make any big adjustments with the graphics or controls, and the soundtrack is stellar, like always. So yeah, Capcom continues the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality, but in general there were always little tweaks. There's not much in the way of anything fresh in this game, but sequels often try to bog you down too much with added features or abilities, sometimes less ends up being more. On the other hand, this is only the second game in this particular series, so there should be plenty of room for fresh ideas. On the other other hand, this game is based on the general outline of the classic series of Mega Man, so in a way this is just a continuation of the series, and there aren't as many new ideas left without reinventing the wheel yet again. I don't know, but what I do know is, despite the lack of anything new, this is sure to please fans of the series who have kept coming back for more. If you're a casual fly-by-night Mega Man fan, then one game in each series is really all you need. I will nitpick a bit that some of the upgrades are in really cryptic spots, some of which you would likely never find without the aid of a strategy guide, remember the internet was in its infancy at the time, and some of them are a bit of a pain in the ass to get to, even when you already know the location. They could have eased up on some of this shit a bit. But other than that, and the fact that this won't win any awards for originality, it's still a great game. I mean, it's modeled right after a top-notch game to begin with. So the game starts out with a cutscene explaining that six months after Sigma's death, there are still some leftover rebel robots hanging around and they seem to be conglomerated in an abandoned factory, which is the setting of the intro stage. Mega Man crashes his motorcycle after incoming fire, and you assume control of him when facing off with this green guy. Dodge his attacks, and take him out. Shoot down these things that latch onto the ceiling and floor, and blast away these flying robots. Scale the wall to get to this ladder, and then keep it going to get up this wall that closes in, and the door to the boss is shortly after. You'll face this massive robot that hangs out in the background, trying to smash you with his spiked ball hands. He's slow, so hop across onto one of these platforms to get some distance, and then shoot him in the face. Once you take him out, you'll get a cutscene of the three X-Hunters monitoring Mega Man, saying they won't make the same mistake others in the past have made by underestimating him. So now you get to the main select screen, where you can choose the order of the eight Maverick stages you want to go through. And much like in previous Mega Mans, you may want to choose a different order than the one I'm going with for this walkthrough. But my suggestion is to start with Wheel Gator. These birds will pop out of this machine and continuously fly straight ahead unless you take out the machine with them. This is a great spot to come back to, to camp out and farm up on sub-tank refills once you got them. Later on, after you get the strike chain, scale this wall, leap off of it, and do a mid-air dash just as you line up with the other side of the wall, and use the chain to cling onto the wall and climb up for a visit from a hologram Dr. Light, who awards you with an X-Buster upgrade that'll charge a shot in both arms. So you have a double shot. Ride these moving platforms across the spikes, dash jump your way up here for some health if you need it, and do the same thing off this wall for more. 
hop in the armor, bust through the wall, and punch the shit out of everything in your way. When you hop out, you'll see a heart tank up here. Later on, you can backtrack here and use a charged up speed burner, a weapon you'll get later on, using this platform to reach so you can cling on to this safe spot to get up. Ride these moving platforms, get out quickly when you reach the top to avoid spikes, shoot down the enemies that hover on the sides, grab the one up, and drop back down. The gate up here might lead to an X Hunter battle if you've beaten two other stages, but this is the first stage we've picked, so it won't work. More on this whole thing later. Regardless of whether or not you engaged in this fight, the boss room is soon after. You'll fight Wheel Gator in a giant pool of oil, which he'll submerge himself into and then either fire off a spin wheel or pop out of the oil before going back into the pool. The walls are your friends here. Use them to avoid both him and the wheels when they first pop out, and then reposition yourself after. Charge up your buster shots while on the wall so you have more power when tearing him apart. After enough shots, he's done for, and you'll get the spin wheel, which takes a few seconds to get going, but it covers a lot of ground and can take out some walls, where a lot of hidden items are found. When charged up, it springs off into eight directions. So now on to Bubble Crab. Blast the bats at the beginning and dash jump your way up here and use the wheel cutter to get the extra life. Then you'll come to a part where this huge robotic fish comes out and stays ahead of you. Firing missiles back at you when this infrared beam that it sends back and forth makes contact with you. Keep your distance and take out the multiple compartments to damage it. It'll open up this door on the ground. Before heading down, scale up the wall and dash jump from the top of it to the vertically scrolling platform and get on top of it where you'll be led to a heart tank in the nook up here. Now head down the gap where the door opened up earlier and take out the jellyfish. Slip down here, hugging the wall for some health, and then down here for health and weapon energy. And then right after, there's a hidden passage through the wall here for more health. After you get the bubble splash from this stage, come back here and charge it up to give you more lift where you can leap up here for a sub tank. Use these vertically scrolling platforms to get across the long pit, and if there's an X Hunter in this stage, which there won't be if you are doing this stage second, then you can climb and jump dash your way up this wall to get to the X Hunter room. Otherwise go through the gate and scale the walls, shooting out these guns stationed on the wall, and the gate to Bubble Crab is just ahead. If you face the X Hunter, you'll be at the gate right after the battle. Bubble Crab will form a bubble shield around himself, sending smaller bubbles with little crabs inside them which will target you if you pop the bubble. Send the spin wheel his way, keep your distance, and watch out for his stomps. After taking him out, you'll get the bubble splash, which is a barrage of four bubbles that travel upward, but it does have a short range. When charged up, it creates a bubble shield and lets you float in the water. You then get a cutscene of the X Hunters, who are impressed with Mega Man's abilities and decide to intervene. Mega Man arrives at the lab, and Dr. Kane tells him that the X-Hunters delivered a message that they have stolen Zero's parts, after he died during the events of Mega Man X-1. Planning to resurrect him, he sets out to retrieve the parts. So now you can enter the three rooms in the stages where an X-Hunter occupies. Thing is, it can be any three of the eight stages. It's completely random, as all eight stages have an X-Hunter room, Thankfully, you'll get one of these icons to indicate which stage has an X-Hunter waiting. Before we move on with the walkthrough, we'll talk about each of the three boss battles, since there's no real telling where or when you'll face them. When you go up against Violin, he'll toss an obscene number of projectiles. Try to slip between them, I know it's a tight squeeze, but you gotta get her done. Then he'll swing a spiked ball and chain around in a circle, don't let it hit you, and just keep laying into him with Bubble Splash and you'll finish him off. Agile busts out a sword and sends large waves of energy at you. Dash underneath them and jump over his dash and fire at him with the Magnet Mine. Surges sits atop this floating platform that slowly shifts across the screen while he does a spinny jump while firing projectiles in all directions and plants a mine on the ground that'll become a real nuisance. 
jump across the platform as he jumps and maneuver your way between his attacks and blast him with the X Buster, which will clear out the mines too if you fire at ground level. And make sure to have the double charge upgrade before taking on this fight to double up on your damage. Once you defeat all three of them, you'll get all of Zero's parts and it will play a role in the game's conclusion. Next on the list is Flame Stag. At the beginning, you'll get to a wall, and this asshole tries to smash you into it. First hop on its back and let it carry you up here where you'll find a sub tank. Lure it to this thin wall and get out of dodge so it smashes it up, opening the way for you. When you get here, the lava rises, so quickly scale the walls using your dash jump for an extra boost, and so you can get past these little divots that impede your progress. And don't worry about stopping for any of these power-ups, they're just going to get you killed. Although there is a heart a tank right before you get to safety, go for that one, even if it kills you. Then you'll get these rocks that sink into the ground. Quickly get off these and lure this asshole into breaking this wall. If you have an X-Hunter to battle, lure this asshole into breaking the wall up here instead to give you more of these sinking rocks. And then you've got another long vertical stretch of wall scaling, this time with these steam pipes periodically firing out. Wait for the openings before passing through, and take out these guys along the way, and then the gate to Flame Stag is just ahead. He hops from wall to wall diagonally, whichever side he clings to first on his way down, head to that side cause he'll be coming back to the opposite side when he lands, and then he sends a fistful of fire at you, one shot downward, and another upward. He'll then dash and start the process over again, so leap over these dash attacks, avoid him on his way down, and send the bubble splash his way. If you time your attacks well, he'll just keep doing the flame attacks over and over where you can just keep dodging and shooting until he's done for, and you'll get the speed burner, which sends a wave of flame, but it can charge up and give you some additional distance when dashing when you get the leg upgrade. Now choose Morph Moth. Charge up your X-Buster to knock the shields out of the hands of these guys and then finish them off. Later on in the game when you get the Crystal Hunter weapon, use it to freeze this guy and then use him as a platform to dash your way up this wall for an extra life and a heart tank. Then use the spin wheel to get down through to this hidden area for a capsule and a body upgrade, which cuts down on the damage you've taken and allows you to perform the Giga Crush which will unleash an explosion after taking a certain amount of damage. Then dash up these walls, there's an extra life on this side. You'll then meet up with this mini boss. He'll hop around slowly, keep away, and blast him until he falls apart and sinks into the ground, but a bug will pop out of his stomach and hop around. This is the main target, because after a little while, the big machine re-emerges and the bug, who is apparently a robot controlling a robot, re-enters its body. The bubble splash does a pretty good number on the bug, so use it to take it out, and then you can advance. If there's an X-Hunter in this stage, hop off the ladder here to get to a hidden area where you'll battle them, and you'll simply return out the door you came in from when you're done. Slip down here for some health, but watch your jumping height. You don't want to hit the spikes. Take out these hopping things and wheelie pricks down the home stretch, and you'll get one more battle with this mini boss before you meet Morph Moth. He'll swing from this web spitting debris up into the air, and then slip underground and kick up more garbage as it slides back and forth. Keep away from his attacks and let the speed burner loose when he's in the hanging mode, and climb the wall while he's underground. Is it really a surprise the moth's weakness is the flame? Then he'll fire this spitting strain of bullshit, which you'll only be able to evade if you're quick with the dash jumps, but you can still attack him from here. After taking out half his energy, the ceiling will blow up and he'll go into his full-on moth form, where he'll fly down and cascade some flashy projectiles. Slide in the opposite direction he's flying to get out from under it and burn his ass up. After enough shots, he's done for, and you'll get the silk shot, which is a short-range block, but it splits off into four and fires off diagonally. It's good for dealing with multiple enemies, particularly ones that are out of range normally, but you do have to get the aiming right. But if you charge it up, you'll fire a larger block that splits off into eight directions, covering more ground. Next on the chopping block is Magna Centipede. The first chunk of the stage has these spotlights that shift back and forth, 
If you get caught in them, these guns will drop from the ceiling and start firing at you. You can take them out, but it's much easier to not have to deal with them at all. So use these backdrops here to your advantage and block the lights from spotting you. Wait for the coast to clear, and then dash behind it. These pricks that shift back and forth need a charged buster shot to freeze them before you can hurt them. When you get here, use a fully charged speed burner to get from this platform to this block and then scale your way up the gap in the ceiling for a heart tank. Then you'll run into these large blocks. Blast the purple ones to clear them out of the way and then be ready to jump over this gray one as it comes sliding your way. When you get to these pits, let the blocks fill up before advancing or you'll get crushed. Dash jump your way over this pit, and then you'll deal with the mini boss. But before you go into this room, you'll notice another gap in the ceiling. Go back to this platform, and similar to before, use a charged speed burner and dash the rest of the way to the wall and scale up for a sub tank. The mini boss is this sword that was mainly made for the eye candy 3D effect. A blind ghost starts waving it around aimlessly before unleashing a quick stabbing motion now and then. Stay back and blast it until it's destroyed. Drop down here and stay in the center to avoid the guns that cling to the wall. At the home stretch, a shit ton of blocks will rain down upon you. Dash your way past them and steer clear of the target that hones in on you. If there's an X Hunter in this stage, then you can get in via this gate at the end, otherwise scale the wall and you'll face off with a mini boss that leaps into the air and fires a spread shot of three projectiles downward. Get between them, back off, and jump over the slow moving balls of energy it fires at you. After enough shots, you'll kill it off, and the gate to Magna Centipede is just ahead. He'll disappear and reappear in random parts of the screen, sometimes on the ceiling. When he's up there, he'll try to pull you into him to inflict damage. Dash your way out of this grasp, and avoid the three stars he tosses at you. They move in an upside down arc pattern. If you get just to the opposite side of him before he throws them, you're safe. Just watch as he adjusts. You'll want to swap positions. Fire the silk shot when he's in front of you. While he swoops downward or using the diagonal split pattern, you can get him while he's on the ceiling. Keep this going until he's dead, and you'll get the magnet mine, which sends out a mine that, unsurprisingly, magnetizes itself to walls. Really good for those perimeter crawling enemies, which you can also control the trajectory of in midair. In its charged up form, it moves slower, giving you better control. Next order of business, Crystal Snail. Early on, hop into this mechanical rig called the Rabbit Armor. Before you move on ahead, backtrack to this gap you jumped over and drop down, making sure to hug the side so you don't drop into the pit. Then dash jump across the long ass pit to hover as far as you can and leap off once it runs out of juice. You can use the strike chain to clamp onto the edge and grab the heart tank. Then scale up the wall here to the directional platform to make your way back. There'll be another rabbit armor suit waiting for you where you picked up the last one. Climb in and punch your way at all the shit in front of you until you get to here where you can't advance any further and have to punch through the ice and abandon it. Lure this massive chunk of ice to slide towards you and jump over it. It'll break the ice that will actually let you get the rabbit armor back. If there's an X Hunter in this stage, hop up here, break the ice blocks, and use the vertically scrolling platforms to get up here for the gate to the X Hunter room. After you're done with this fight, you'll drop down right here where you last left off. If you still have the armor, break through the blocks for the extra life, or dash jump over the spikes to get across if you don't have it. Soon after that is a mini boss, this robot in a block of ice while all these other pricks try to shoot you from above. Avoid the bullets and blast him to hell with the spin wheel. Next you'll slide down a long ice hill, just make sure you don't let the massive ice block follow you into the wall. Slide down this wall of the open pit and slip into this gap to find a capsule where you'll get the head armor upgrade, which also detects hidden objects or areas. Like right here there's a hidden passage which leads to the extra life through the wall. Climb back up, and on your way up this hill, another block of ice will slide towards you. Quickly retreat until it settles in this spot and then advance. Right before the gate to Crystal Snail is another block, but there's hardly any space. So you wanna scale up it as it's rushing towards you. Crystal Snail will fire three projectiles that flow upward. 
So keep your distance and hit him with the Magnet Mine, which will knock him out of his shell and send him across the room. He'll also hide in his shell, spin around, and then fire a wave of energy across the ceiling that sends the battle into slow motion. Get up on the wall and stay there because he won't be hurt by your attacks and you don't want to get hit on the rebound when he jumps up. Keep this going until he's dead and you'll get the Crystal Hunter, which fires a crystal projectile slowly upward and then it slopes down, freezing enemies in crystal. When charged up, it slows down all enemies on the screen. Now on to Overdrive Ostrich. If there's an X Hunter in this stage, right at the beginning when you get to this wall, use the spin wheel to get through the wall and it'll lead you to the gate. You'll exit the door you came in when you're done. Then head down the ladder, hop on the motorcycle, and blast everything in your path as you ride forward. Dash jump on these ramps to get over this monstrosity, and then jump up onto this platform to get up here and you'll snag a line of power-ups including the heart tank. Take out these scorpions from a distance so you can react to the lasers that fire straight and the projectiles that arc from its tail, and then dash jump up here where you can use the spin wheel to break the blocks and get the legs upgrade that upgrades your air dash, and right after is the gate to Overdrive Ostrich. He'll toss boomerangs, both by spitting one forward at you and another from overhead where he'll send four cascading down. When he does this jump thing, be ready to maneuver your way to the far end of the opposite side so you can slip between them right as they start coming down. If you move too early, then you're keeping yourself centered on the screen and you'll get hit. He'll also do a running charge. Jump over him when he does this and unload on him with the Crystal Hunter. After enough shots, you'll take him out and get the Sonic Slicer, a pair of long ass boomerangs that sail upward and can bounce off walls. Its charged up version will send a wave attack down from the top of the screen. Final dickhead on the list, Wire Sponge. First things first, scale the wall here to grab a heart tank in this hidden area. Kill all this weird shit that pops out of the ground, and when you get here right as it starts raining, use this moving wall as a springboard to dash jump up here and then across the other way to get to an extra life, plus a sub tank on the other side. Get on the lift and shift to the edge to let these idiots take themselves off the screen by jumping at you and missing. And quickly get off the top so you don't get a face full of spikes. If there's an X Hunter in this stage, slip below the lift instead of getting on it. And it'll lead you to the gate where you'll come back out the door you came in when you're finished. The home stretch is all enemies you've seen. Scorpions, frogs, and these flying dipshits. Wire Sponge has essentially a grappling hook on the vines that he throws your way, using it to pull himself against the wall. Use the wall as a way to leapfrog him, keep your distance, and unleash the sonic slicers at him. You can stun him with these and get repeated shots in. Watch out for when he gets pissed and does the stupid dance. Back away and keep yourself in between the three electric currents that pop out of the floor. Will then latch onto the ceiling and fire off seeds that grow little vines that grow out of the floor and get in your way. Blast these things. After taking them out, you'll get the strike chain which can be used as a weapon, plus it can latch onto walls and make getting a hold of them easier from long distances, and snatch up items. When charged up, it has longer reach and deals out more damage. So now you're done with the 8 Mavericks, and you'll get a cutscene where Dr. Kane tells you that he's located the X-Hunter's base on the North Pole. So now you can start the Fortress stages, but you can still backtrack to any of the previous stages in case there are any items or upgrades you need to grab, or to refill your sub-tanks, which by the way, you can do in between the Fortress stages, so feel free to use them up throughout any of these stages and then restock before the next one. So the first X-Hunter stage starts off with some of these short drops. Kill the bats and dash jump here for an extra life. Ride the platform, blast all these guns out of your way, and then quickly scale the wall here as it closes in. Right after is another one of these, but there are indentations, so switch sides or make sure you get enough distance to get around the overlap. You've got a third wall scale job before you encounter these claws that you can swing from. Don't worry about them though. Drop down instead, deal with these guys and grab the extra life and energy capsule before the home stretch where these guns occupy the walls and the sides of the moving platforms that you'll need to use to head upward. 
latch on, blast them when you can get evened out with them, and hop from platform to platform until you reach the ladders. There's one more closing wall you need to scale, and the boss gate is right after. Here you'll battle Violin again, or for the first time if you didn't face him earlier. It's the same battle as earlier, except these blocks will appear randomly in the air. Use the bubble splash again to finish him off, and you'll move on to the second fortress stage. Early on, you'll end up in the water. Shoot down these fish and watch the low ceilings. Grab the wall or dash jump. Then wait for these guns to fire and slip between them before taking them out. When you get back in the water, cling to these platforms to get over the spikes. Keep spamming the jump button to stay on until they bring you across. When you get here, wait for the platform to drop down to give you a lift. Cling onto it and get onto the left side to avoid the flame then shift to the right, and then the left again so you don't get crushed. Do a dash jump to get across this pit of spikes, then use the wheel cutter to get through this wall. And use the speed burner and dash across this pit for an extra life, and the gate to the boss is right after. It's another battle with surges, but unlike the violin rematch, this is a much different fight from the first one. He's stationed in this machine with a wall of four guns that fire lasers that move straight on, and electric orbs that move slowly and in a loopy pattern. You'll have these four platforms that shift vertically and are the only thing keeping you from falling into the spikes below. Hop around to get away from his attacks. Wherever he lines up is the gun that will fire, so try not to stay level with him and use the silk shot to take out the guns. Once all four are wiped out, he'll wipe out two of the platforms, which cuts your available area in half. He'll shift vertically and fire orbs that stop and split into a spread shot in four directions, alternating between diagonal and horizontal slash vertical directions. Try to time your movements to get between these shots, and use the sonic slicer on him until you deal enough damage to take him out. In stage 3, there's an extra life and energy capsule buried in this gap which you'll have to use a precise launch of the strike chain to get. Then hop on this platform and it'll start moving left. Each time you jump on it, it'll change its direction clockwise. So you're going to want to jump on it again to get it moving up once it passes this platform. There are some energy capsules in here, but you have to dash between the spikes. So it's up to you if you want to risk it for the biscuit. Now you've got another one of these change of direction platforms to maneuver up this way. But it's a pain in the ass because you've got to quickly jump on it several times here to arrange up the gap. Blast this guy here to get him out of your way, then jump on it to send him through this gap, and then you have to spam jump it to get back to the center to get up here to the top. The part that sucks about the segment is how you can get the platform stuck and have to go back down and start all over again. It's fun as shit. There's a fork in the road here, the top ladder which you'll need to send the platform up and across, or you can lure one of these bats over and freeze it with the Crystal Hunter to use it as a platform. It'll lead you to two extra lives, the first one right away, and then after speed burning your way past the spikes, the second one is in this nook between all the spikes. You'll have to carefully use the speed burn and dash your way between. And when you drop down, there'll be a hidden area through the wall where you'll find Hologram Dr. Light doing his best Wayne Campbell impression, and as long as you've collected all the upgrades, you'll get a surprise upgrade in this capsule. What this surprise ends up being is the ability to perform the Shoryuken, a callback to fellow Capcom game Street Fighter, just like in the last game with the Hadouken. To execute this, you have to press down, forward, down, forward, and the shoot button simultaneously. If you're confident in your ability to pull this off, go for it. Otherwise, the other path has only one extra life between these spikes you'll have to dash between, and there's no upgrade. But it's not nearly as dangerous, so take your pick. Dash across the spikes on your way to the gate, and you'll battle Agile. And much like our last X Hunter rematch, this is a departure from the first fight. You'll take the form of this machine, and send a couple electric orbs down the wall and across the floor while dropping the ceiling of spikes that continuously rebuilds in between attacks. The safe spot is directly underneath him, but you gotta watch out for the gap in the floor that leads to the spikes. And the position of this gap will change throughout the battle depending on where the gap in the ceiling drops, causing the floor to stack up. 
He'll also unleash some missiles from both sides of the room. Stay low to avoid the explosions. Because scaling the wall is needed to hit him with most of your weapons, the Magnet Mine is a good weapon due to your ability to use it from below, and it does decent damage. Keep smashing him with this shit while avoiding his attacks, and you'll soon finish him off and move on to the next stage. The fourth stage is the obligatory Maverick Rematch stage. First you'll scale the wall and enter the teleporter to get into the rematch room. There are eight portals in here, and here's a little map showing which one is in which door. Choose them in any order you want. Battles are the same as they were the first time. If you want to conserve sub tanks, battle the easier ones when you're lower on health, and refill your energy between bosses by pressing these buttons to give you little energy increases. After taking out the last of the eight Mavericks, the place blows up and you hear the voice of Sigma, who is revealed to still be alive, and challenges Mega Man to come face him. So the fifth and final stage is Magna Centipede stage? What the hell? I seriously thought I picked the wrong stage first when I played it. But don't let your eyes deceive you, this is indeed the last stage, and it is the same as Magna Centipede until you get to where the mini boss normally is and you'll meet up with Sigma. He brings in Zero, saying he's out for revenge because you let him die last time. So there are two scenarios here. If you didn't get all of Zero's parts, you'll battle him. He fires three big waves of energy at you. Use the walls to get over them, and quickly fire a charged buster shot at him, because if you wait a split second too long, he'll just block whatever you throw at him. He'll also dash and kick up a bunch of debris that comes down. Leap over him and get away from him. After taking out all but one of his hit points, he'll come to his senses and realize who you are and what is happening, and clears a path for you to fight Sigma. If you did find all the parts, then before this battle can begin, the real Zero comes out of nowhere and obliterates this fake Zero, as Sigma didn't have the right parts. Sigma leaves the room, and Zero clears the path, essentially skipping the Zero fight entirely, and potentially giving you more sub-tanks to work with. Drop down, and you'll face off with Sigma, who bounces off the wall, crashes down, and sends five balls of energy that move in your general direction, but scatter. So at this point, get as far away as you can, and weave your way between them. He'll also fire an electric current your way when he stops. Use the wall to get over it. Use the sonic slicer on him when he stopped, or when you reach him during his travels across the room. And when you take out all of his energy, as you surely expected by now, he'll take on another form, and it's a whole nother life meter you've got to drain, although you'll never actually see one. This time he morphs into a giant version of his own face, showing off that 3D effect some more. He'll shift horizontally across the room, spitting out this beam. Use the wall to dash jump your way over him. You'll need a lot of height to make this happen. Hit him with the strike chain, and get as far away from him as you can. He'll also spit out these globs that will turn out to be small minions from earlier in the game. They get in the way, but blasting them can yield power-ups, usually in the weapon energy form, but take advantage of it. After dealing enough damage, you'll finally take him out, although he'll send one last message saying every defeat will just make him stronger, promising many more sequels down the road. Mega Man and Zero reflect on their victory, wondering when or if the fighting will ever really end. Then X hops on his motorcycle and goes for a ride as the credits roll. So that's it for Mega Man X2, but this would not be the end of the series, of course, as Mega Man X3 would be released a year later, but we'll save that one for another time. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.